Yeah, so <laughs> quality of life suffers tremendously with HS for various reasons. So as I said, they tend to miss more work and more school, um, which is going to have an impact in just overall well-being, but then their socioeconomic status could suffer from that. And so then you get into this cycle, right? So you can't work. So then uh, you feel bad about not being able to work. You don't have um, the money to do the things that, that you want to do. And then that leads to more depression, stress. Maybe you turn to things like smoking, which we know smoking can exacerbate HS, but you're trying to deal with the stress of HS. So it, it really is um, quite debilitating. And there have been a lot of quality of life studies in various dermatologic conditions. Uh, psoriasis is a big one where quality of life, they did a huge study and they showed quality of life was just as bad as if you had cardiovascular disease. And people were just like, oh my God, you have psoriasis. It's, you know, to the patient, it's like having heart disease. Well, quality of life studies for hydradenitis suppurativa are worse than psoriasis. So these patients' quality of life suffers tremendously. It tends to happen after puberty. So you think about young adults that are trying to, you know, find mates. They maybe want to get married and have kids. And just the idea of being intimate with these chronic debilitating diseases that affect the groin area. So there's so much to it, but, you know, it tremendously affects quality of life. So one of the major things that we need to do is educate. I can't tell you how many patients come in and, you know, finally someone suggested they see a dermatologist, but there are the, the incidents and prevalence are probably underestimated because it's underreported. I have people who've had boils under their arms for 20 years that finally make it in. I can't even count the number of patients that come in for something else and then we end up finding out that they have HS, but they never knew it was a condition. Oh yeah, my mom had it. You know, she told me to do this and that, or I just thought that they were boils. They didn't really know that this was a medical condition, an auto-inflammatory condition, let alone there were treatments for it. So I think there still needs to be a significant amount of education, both for the public and then also for other healthcare providers, because dermatologists are sometimes the people that they seek out, but more often they're going to their gynecologist, they're going to an emergency room physician. And if they are not clued in that, hey, this is a chronic uh, um, auto-inflammatory condition, what happens is they get short courses of antibiotics a week or two, and then they send them out or they lance it, which can actually lead to worse scarring, more sinus tracking, and then they're worse off, right? So if we educate the public, they know who to see, but then also educate our colleagues on how to manage an acute flare, but then send them to dermatology so they can get more chronic treatment. Um, then we could definitely see an improvement in, in some of those disparities. Um, so some education is, is certainly important on the part of healthcare providers and patients. And the earlier we intervene, sometimes we can, you know, halt the progression and Patients don't end up with such uh, severe conditions. So we want to treat it early. So even pediatricians, we need to make sure that we're educating them. So I think the key takeaways are number one, awareness. Um, we've focused a lot on, and you know, I treat psoriasis, I treat atopic dermatitis, I treat alopecia areata. I treat vitiligo and all of those things are important. But when you have patients, when you see young men and women uh, come in with hydradenitis separativa, these severe, I mean, they're draining constantly, ruining clothes, bed sheets, they're in pain, they're missing work, they can't be productive members of society. Um, to see what they're living with and, and living through. Sometimes I am amazed that a lot of these patients have been able to manage. Um, and some of them are very young. So education, we got to get the patients in the door. And then we need more awareness so that pharmaceutical companies are interested in developing treatments, right? We need everybody on board because I can treat the patients, but I can't create the tools for the toolbox. Um, so we need everyone 
um, as, as partners in combating hidradenida separativa. Um, but it starts with really awareness campaigns. I mean, it's a, it's a sensitive topic. So getting patients to speak out about it, you know, hopefully we can find some, some patient advocates and, and patients that are willing to, to share their stories. Cause I think that that always uh, has a major impact because I can say whatever, but when you talk with the patient and understand what it is they're going through, I think there's just a different perspective there.